Today, I'm going to show you some interesting things that I've found while driving around my district. Today I've got some interesting little clips that I've taken while driving around the district, often when I think of a topic to go and uh, make a show of. I, uh, along the way I find some stuff on the roadside or, or wherever and it doesn't quite fit in the show so I've just compiled them all together and it makes quite a nice little episode by itself. Now it was taken a couple of months ago so uh, it was a bit greener back then and uh, as you can see behind me she's well and truly dried out now. I'm not always focused on nature in my life, I, I have uh, an interest in other things as well and um, at the moment our little Jack Russell bitch has uh, had puppies here they are here little Jack Russell crosses and they're four weeks old now and um, getting quite healthy and lively aren't they cute little doggies we got three little boys or dogs we call them and for the girls, they're called bitches. Now, if you don't understand dog talk, a bitch is a female dog, and the dog is called, as in the male dog, is called a dog. Now, originally, bitch was not a swear word, and it's still not a swear word if you're in farming areas or people that deal with dogs. It's quite acceptable to call them a bitch, so I didn't just swear. Now, that's, uh, it isn't nice to call a lady that. So that's why uh, it became a swear word, but uh, originally it wasn't. Anyway, enough of that talk. We'll get on with the episode. Do you ever feel you don't get out what you're putting in? and saw this big heap of hives here. There's about 130 separate hives in this lot and they'll be a commercial operation for honey producers and they're using this canola crop that's behind me to build up the hive and they use canola flowers because it has a lot of pollen in it and that's what's used to build the numbers of the beehive up so the, the number of workers and you put a, a screen oh you take basically you take all the screen out usually you have a screen between two boxes and the that keeps the queen from going up into the top and laying the eggs up in there and creating the, um, the next lot of uh, workers but this time you just take the screen out you let her go up through the whole hive she lays eggs in all the comb and that builds the numbers up and then you can take your hives and go somewhere else where there's some better nectar because the nectar that comes out of canola isn't very good, it's dark and it doesn't flow very well. So you take it to somewhere like a like box trees or a red gum forest or something like that after you've taken them to a canola, uh, next to a canola paddock. And uh, I don't know this, these hives at all. Each hive has its own sort of personality because it takes after the queen a bit and I don't know how violent these ones are so I won't get too close um, but I do want a bit of a look and see if we can zoom in on on the entry that little hole there down the bottom of the hive is the, the entry there where they go in and out the entry of a hive it's essentially like a gate and there's 
there's uh, it's like guardian bees right on the outside and they look at every single bee that comes in and they make sure it belongs to that hive and if it doesn't they'll chase it off they'll fight it and chase that bee off and uh, so yeah, all these bees are settled there are wild hives around here so if one of them did smell the honey and want to steal some they can't because they'll get fended off by the guardian bees so in each one of these sections so I'll see if I can do this without getting stung each one of these sections here there's two layers one two that's a hive and then over there one two that's a hive so there's about 130 here all up and they'll be full of brood now because they've been there a little while and it's, it's really noisy I can hear a lot of flying and they don't seem too bad these bees are not buzzing around my head um, they're not threatened um, whoop, here's one that's uh, not happy with me um, but it's good like these this color clothing is good if you wear dark clothes say black and dark blues that's a, a big no-no in the bee world I and mean, that's why you see people wearing a bee suit they got a white suit on usually or a very light gray they're never black because I think their old enemy the bear it reminds them of that and they know to go after things that look like that that are, um, might be want to get their honey I'm over the road now from where the beehives are and it's like the last of the flowers for this canola crop most of them have most of the flowers have turned into these these pods and those pods will go sort of a light brown color and inside them even now you able to see the starting of that of those canola seeds and they crush those up and they become the canola oil, oozes out the oil, and then they do a couple of things to it and turn into that nice cooking oil and everybody thinks is good. And so the bees though, they're after this. And quite a lot of pollen, a bit of nectar, um, but it's the pollen that the bees are after mainly, or that is really good for them. And um, if I can get some, uh, here we go, some pollen here, see my hand, sort of a bit yellow in those sort of spots, that's the pollen. And, um, yeah. These are, a, they're a must, from the mustard family, they're the same family as, um, well your brassicas like the broccoli and cauliflower and cabbages and that sort of stuff. And a lot of your Chinese vegetables are, are a, a same sort of family. But at springtime, there's thousands of acres of this stuff all around this side of the world. And it's uh, good to have a, a huge hive of bees close by because they'll fertilize. I mean, they take all the stuff back. Um, the pollen back and the, the nectar back for their hive but they're doing a service to the farm because they're fertilizing all the flowers with all their buzzing around they distribute that pollen down into the deeper part of the flower and it gets fertilized and then the seeds set so they can turn it into uh, canola oil and it's got a very distinct smell it's quite tall I'll just get out in the middle of this for a second we've had a reasonable winter for rain and I'm not, I'm not short, I'm over six foot, and yeah, there's probably, yeah, there'd, there'd be some plants in here, uh, you know, 100 and, 185 centimetres or six foot, so. Yeah, pretty nice, but it's a, it's a fair income monoculture. There's nothing else growing in this paddock. That's because 
not just because of the competition from the taller plants, but because all the other plants have been sprayed out anyway. And it is as dry as a chip down here. They've used every bit of moisture up on the surface. But it's, it's, a, um, it's a good crop, it's a successful crop. Yeah, good luck to them. Well, at this time of the year, it's really nice coming into spring and all the birds come to life and all that sort of nice stuff that spring brings. But one thing that it brings which I can't stand is barley grass seeds. Barley grass is this stuff here. It's uh, an introduced species and it was introduced as a sheep fodder and I think back as early as the 1920s by the agricultural department in all their wisdom and it does provide sheep feed for th maybe three months of the year or maybe a little bit more but it's uh, the rest of the year it just gets in animals eyes and wool and uh, it's just horrible stuff horrible stuff so got a it's got a little barb on the end of it so once it's stuck on your clothes or socks or in an animal it, it, it doesn't come out very easily and if you, if you rub it between your fingers it only goes one way so that's deeper and um, you have to wear, well you don't have to but if you want to avoid getting them in your socks it's best to wear these sock guards you often see me on this channel wearing these things the reason is because of this barley grass there are a few other grasses that are a pain, but this, this stuff is the worst. So these guards I wear, because you get them in your socks, see, like, like that. And, um, yeah, there's another one, top of my sock. Otherwise, they just go right down in your boots, and they're a real pain. You've got to stop and take your boots off all the time. And uh, these sock guards, they also come in matching pairs. I'm just going to show you how you use a rabbit trap. Now these rabbit traps, now I believe they're illegal to use because they are pretty cruel. Look at the teeth on that, that's designed to uh, catch a rabbit's foot. Basically the problem is they don't just catch rabbits, they catch goannas and echidnas and anything. Two year olds that put their foot on it. So the way they work is you dig a hole and you put it down in the hole and then you put a little piece of newspaper or something over the top of that after you've set it. Now, I'm just going to set it first and I'll show you. So, you put the peg in the ground, you bang that right in so your game can't get away once it's got its foot caught in there. And you stand on the, that part there, it's your spring. Right, then put your foot under your fingers underneath and that plate holds the spring that holds that that's your little catch there stops your plate from being whacked or from, from being flicking back up so then a rabbit comes along puts its foot on that plate and you can set it. You can set it quite finely. I've set that fairly uh, coarsely, so you can set that back a little bit further. So if a small rabbit comes on there, that tap would just set it off. So I'll do it now. Now, if that was a rabbit's foot, it'd be well and truly broken. Look at that. That's fairly hard wood on that stick, and. Um, that rabbit would be pinned and then the pin would be in the peg would be in the ground and the rabbit would be trying to get away like that so I don't really like them and I'm sort of glad in a way they're banned because I don't really like cruelty to animals even feral animals we should avoid it where we can it's a lot nicer just to shoot something put it out of its misery than 
half the night it goes into a bit of shock and you come and get it out of the trap later. So that is how you operate a rabbit trap. Well thanks for watching once again. Welcome to any new subscribers that have just joined the channel and also please subscribe if you haven't already and give me a big thumbs up and also turn on your notifications because it all helps the channel grow. And over the next uh, little while I'm going to start putting on um, excerpts from previous shows and also excerpts from up and coming shows just to uh, fill in a bit of space there that I notice I uh, give people a bit more content and help bring more people over to the channel and uh, just provide a bit more entertainment and uh, here's a mummy here this is Jigsaw, come here girl she's a very good mum a nice little bitch. Alright, I'll see you on the next episode.